Hello everybody, welcome to my episode of Mixed Mo's. In today's episode, we're gonna be um, working on Ransom Marquis one more time. Um, I'm hoping, hoping to get most of this done today if I can. Um, just waiting a few bits to come back, but by the time that comes back tomorrow, I'll share this video sort of wrapped up and ready to go. Uh, so today we're gonna to be putting back on the cogs, the chains, um, the uh, drive um, cable mechanism. I can't put the hands in it, they're not back yet from uh, Martin Butler who Retro Restore. Uh, but we'll make a bit of a head start, try and get this lawnmower back together. So when the handle's coming, it should just give me about half hour, just put it all together, put some oil in and try and run this machine up. That's what I'm hoping today. Uh, however, that could all go backwards, depending on how this all goes back together. So we shall see. Um, I've got some grease nipples also on order, so I can grease this machine up, because the old nipples are not working, and um, I need to make sure this machine's got a bit of grease inside it, so we'll see how we get on. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mars, hit the old subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all, and um, without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's check out this Ransom Marquis lawnmower. Right, so we are winning a little bit. Um, last video you saw me put the uh, blade on, the cylinder and what have you, so that's all good. So this time we're gonna be working on the cogs. Now this cog over here, the main drive cog, that was already on, so it's only on hand tight. And all I've done is, uh, remember their left hand threads are off. Um, just put a bit of copper slip inside there, just to stop it from, um, from seizing up in the future. So that one can be done up. I'm gonna put it up with a chain wrench as well, just to make sure it is on there, on there nice and tight. Um, but it shouldn't come off because of the way it's threaded. Um, it's got a bit nice and tight, so I'm just going to wind it in by hand initially. It's running better now, I've got a bit of copper slip on there, that's a certainty. So I've got a chain wrench, I'm just going to, I'll do them up with a chain wrench a bit later on. Before we get too, too invested in it. It's going to go all the way up. And teeth are quite sharp on them, like that old cog. Get it all caught up now that you won't see. Oh, that's nearly there. It's time to bite now. Okay, that'll do for now. I can nick it up a bit later on, no problem. Um, next, a small cog. The cylinder one and again more copper slip inside there because i had an absolute job getting them off but before i do that i need to take these bolts back off because that sits inside there as a little tiny um spacer so these have to come back off now there were i must admit there were a bit of a pickle to put on that's quite not quite the right socket that ain't outside the wrong size socket should be nine and sixteenths so let's just back these off a touch. And what I might do is do one at a time. If I can. So I say there were a bit of a pig to put on. Don't really want to be using adjustables really if I can uh, impact so I can help it. cylinder won't move if it does I'll reline it back up again but we should see I'll have to readjust it Better. I might just put a little bit of copper slip on that as well that's what we want to there like so, you get a little bit of copper slip. Then bolts are very, very dry. Bit on that one. Now, funny enough, I was going to cut this bit off of here to get that cylinder out when I had and first initially had problems. And funny, I was looking at Pete's one the other day, and someone's actually done that. So they, they've encountered the same issue, but uh, now hopefully they can see. Uh, it is possible to do it without removing that. Let me back up. Pop that one off. I think that's the one that's running better out too. 
that one's taken. I guess that's this one's gonna be a bit of a pig. We'll see how it goes, it might go. Yes, yeah, right. And that little space there is needed. Mind your fingers when you do something, you don't want to smash them on that on that uh, cog or sprocket, as some people call them. So that'll probably cut you wide open. Like that, nice and tight. And now, with my uh, copper slipped sprocket stroke cog, which this one was an absolute pig to get off, do you remember? I can now put a little bit of slip on them threads. to help it on its merry way. And again, it's gonna be left hand thread. Oh, it does feel very, very, very tight on there too. Let's put a bit more slip on there. I might have to lock, just lock the cylinder up to do this up. Let's put plenty on there. Start it off. So you might have to put something in the cylinder, a block of wood or something in the cylinder, just until you um, can tighten that up. And that'll be out on a chain wrench. So then you get a, a hammer. And I'll wedge that, if I can, into the cylinder, like so. And then I'm going to use this cloth to start to wind that cog all the way home. It's got to go quite a fair old way yet. So I may have to do it up and then back it off. It has got to go quite a fair old way. And a chain wrench will help that. It's starting to go now. It's got to go quite a fair old way yet. So let me get that done up with a chain wrench and I'll come back once I've done it. I'm just making the start of this chain wrench. What it does, I pull the machine over so I can actually get a better leverage on it. And the cylinder is now been blocked off. Unfortunately, that's in right in the way, so you've got to keep backing it off, taking it off, put it back on. It's just part of the trials and tribulations. So I'll set that up. far over as we can. There goes my hammer, I'm on my feet. And that's all there is to it. Just keep tightening it up. So let me get this done and I'll come back once I've done it. Right, so this is where we are now. Um, this sprocket is now on, and when you put this sprocket in, it's actually got to sit inside the cylinder. It's sort of like a, not countersunk, but it was a groove for this one to go in. Um, and if you measure the distance between um, this back plate body and the cog and this, it should be about one and a quarter inch, somewhere around there. Um, but I don't have my chain wrench as tight as I can. Um, here's my chain wrench I was using. I bought two, broke the first one inside two seconds, and I bought this one here, which is quite a good one, and that fits on the, on the big cog as well. So uh, it's not the correct size chain, uh, but it will do. So now they're both on. This chain goes on behind the clutch plate, and then this one, the bigger one, goes on the top cog, the bottom cog, and then this will then come over and sit on the, uh, on the main clutch plate here, which will go on last. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna put the, um, the drive, um, device in when you activate the drive there's a little tiny pin inside there so don't lose that and 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cable in first, like so, stick him in. Like so, take the slack up on that. That's it, and that will go into there like so. Bear with under that bolt. That's better. Oh, is it? That then go into there like so, and then that will then feed through, and then that gives you your adjustment. So I'm just gonna, what I'm going to do now. Just put a little tiny nut just on the on the end, just to keep it together. Okay, that's all I do. And as you as you depress this, this will then move to forwards and backwards, and it'll be tensioned on, under the clutch plate. Okay, so that will now go on into position, and that will just literally sit down to there and down to there. And that little tiny piece there, that's what gives you, that sits in, and that gives you adjustment on the clutch plate like so. Okay, so sit them in, into there. And that's now in position, and then I'll go and get the clutch plate over, and then we can start to put the clutch plate on. Right, so with your um, drive assembly now fitted, what you want to do next is, you've got a big big metal pipe here, and you've got this um, this washer. Uh, the dry side went across the body from what I remember, so put that on, lift it up, stick that in there, and then push your drive mechanism up close. That all goes on, then this one goes on. And then you can then get your clutch plate and your, it's got a cog on the back, so put your small chain on there and then offer all of that on, like so, and then just separate your chain out so your chain will then fit over the top of your, of your main roller cog. It's a bit fiddly. What you may have to do is take that centre pin out, a big pin I just showed you, you may have to take that out just to give it a bit of room. But it will go, it's starting to, there it goes. Right, now that's all in place, what you can then do is when you do a slightly, you can then adjust that on your height, on your drive adjustment there, see that, how it moves up and down? You can then set your set your tension on your roller. But now you've done that, you've got to put your key weight um, washer in, there's a key weight on here. So that's got to go on, like so. Push it all in nice and tight. And eventually you should have enough shaft hanging out to then put your, your plate in place. Now you go and find my, uh, my grinder key to do that up. And then you've also got where is it? This little kitty here. That's going to sit inside there. And when you operate your your drive, that will then push that out in and out to give you a drive. Okay. So once it's all been put together, we should be in a better situation where um, that's all drawn together. So let me just get uh, my grinder key. We we'll do that up nice and tight, so it's all sitting as it should do. Right. Before you do that up, though, what you want to do is then put your chain on your big chain. And what's important here is to remember your direction of which way your link goes on. Now that link actually isn't done up, so lucky, lucky I spotted that. Let me just put that link on quickly. There it goes. That's on now. And put your link in the direction um, the chain is going so it doesn't come off. So it's all going to be spinning forwards, so it's going to be that way. So stick that one on. That all goes on. And there should be enough slack in that clutch plate for you to put that on. That's the general consensus. If not, you have to separate the chain. Let me try to get a bit more adjustment out of that if I can. And possibly spin, spin the, the blade round just enough so it goes on. So that, that chain's now all, all in place. Everything is where it needs to be. So now we can just start to tighten down the clutch plate. Remember, I use my, my grinder key to do that. So let me get it tightened down and I'll come back when I've done so. Okay, so now what I did, as I did that up, that's a normal handed thread that as well, okay? It's not, not a left handed thread, so it's a normal handed thread. What you remember is also is when you're doing this one up, lift up the, um, the drive and what you're doing there is you're putting tension on this chain and on the bottom chain as well. So that's a little bit of slack 
a little bit, but there's enough tension on the back chain, so I won't get a lot more out of that. So I'm happy with that. As the tension comes around, that will, that will pull the chain tight anyway. Okay, so that's now all on. Now what we can do is put your clutch plate on, and there's a space for your, your nipple here. Um, so that wants to go. So you want to stick him on with a grease nipple there. That all goes on. And now we can start to put down these springs. There's three of those to do. And all I'll do with these is impact of these on, but just let's just take your time. Just take the just take the pressure on it. Now the only reason I do that two times, I'm still waiting on some parts to come in. Like the um I'm still waiting on the um the cable to come in. I'm still waiting on some other bits and pieces. I don't do it up too tight just yet. Um, once the other parts come in, then uh, then we'll be laughing. So that needs to go up into there like so. Push that one in. Do that one up. Now you may need to uh, take these off and just make sure these springs are actually when they go in. These are actually going through the hole. Now you'll know that when you do them up. Otherwise you won't get enough tension on your drive cable when the clutch plate starts to tighten down. So just take them in turns. As I said, I'm not gonna nick them up until um, I know that the, um, the drive cable's in place, which I'm just waiting on the, um, on the handlebars for that. Off of uh, Martin from Retro Restore. So do them up nice and tight, as tight as you can get them, and then um, leave them be. And then what we do is when uh, when I get the other bits, we can then compress them down. Right, so I can't do no more to that until I get my my um, levers back from Mr. Butler over at Retro Restore. But I can now fit this back guard. And hopefully, this didn't actually do up anywhere. It literally just sat, sat in like so. Bend that back, that sits in there like that. And that stops all the grass getting into the back roller. So it should be, if I find my bits and bobs tray, grab some bits and bobs. Should be two of these. And they're gonna do up on there. I put washers on them as well. Just make sure I get the right ones. Two little tiny washers. That one on there, that one on there. I'm pretty sure these are little nylon lockers. By the looks of it, they're a bit of a pig to get on because I have painted over the uh, the old uh, threads a bit. So, but that's what I've gone to there. You can sort of get the gist of what I'm doing. So let me get them wound up. I'll come back on there on. I'll a bit of a clean. I can put a bit of grease over this bodywork, which is uh, to be expected. It will come off because the paint has all been. Um, lack it up now so it will, it will all come off but it's part and parcel of it so let me get them two done up into position and then that's that bit done and then uh, literally just got to wait for the um, the arms to come in I think the, the, uh, the uh, levers and then I need to take I've got some nipples on order they're going to be coming off these two and one of a clutch plate uh, so I can grease them up and then I've got to grease the, um, the cylinder all the chains and all the roller you don't grease the roller you have to oil them that's now the back plate in. Uh, these were painted silver. I guess I've got some silver paint. I'll spray some into a into a can and then just hand brush them on. And as I say, I'm gonna put a bit of green on here where the box has been rubbing. Or I just, just put a bit of black in there just to blacken that bit off. One or the other, I haven't sorted it out yet. The lacquer hasn't hasn't taken very strong there, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'll get a bit of a clean up because it has got very dirty whilst bit on here. Um, well, it's gonna get dirty anyway, but you know what I mean. Just to tie it back up. And then we can go back around the side when I get the levers in. Um, I have a confession to make. I may have dropped a piece coming out of the drive assembly. Not sure yet. I dropped a piece which I found, but I thought I heard two bits drop. So I need to investigate that because until I get the lever on there, I need to see whether the clutch plate is gonna move or not. At the moment, it's not moving by hand, but I don't have enough tension on the cable to operate it. So we'll see about that a bit later on, but uh, I have a spare engine here which is Pete Frows which I can have a look just to investigate what part I am missing if I am so I'd probably do it off camera to identify the piece but uh, we'll see how we get on so um, be another day or two for this parcel turns up for this um, for the levers 
but it'll be two or three seconds for you guys. When it turns up, I'll crack on with the video. Okay, so unfortunately, um, it's not gonna happen today um, because I have noticed that the part I've dropped, there's two parts I've dropped. One of them was, was like a metal dowel rod, uh, about an inch and a quarter long. And the other piece was a, a ball bearing, uh, which goes in between the dowel rod, dowel rod and the plunger. There's a ball bearing in there and it's a, a quarter inch ball bearing. Um, that fits inside there. Um, I have since purchased some and uh, they'll be fitted very, very shortly. Without that ball bearing in there, the driver is not going to um, do its action and do its work. So unfortunately, the Marquis will not be run up today, but hopefully he'll be run up in the next video. You'll see him on, on the Ransom Marquis. I'm very sorry about that, but this is the way it goes. If you enjoyed this episode of Mixed Motors, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to the old channel, rank your bell and set notifications to all. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Motors very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take care easy.